Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praises and all glory to Yahabah Shimei Oshai. I want to give double honors to the apostles of great mercy and do rule well. Salutation to the men of the hope and sense elect. There is a brother Marcus out here in Trinidad. Just want to do a little edification for the elect's sake. And the name of this lesson would be Spiritual Public Servants. Spiritual Public Servants. When you look up the definition of public servant, it says what a person who works for the state or for local government, such as a judge or teacher. And aren't we judges and teachers? All right. So we are spiritual public servants of the Lord Yahabah Shemiah Shai. And therefore, it is our duty. We have a duty and obligation, and also an obligation that we love. Because the scripture says, I delight to do thy will, to go out and feed the elect. The scripture says in 2 Timothy, I believe it's 2 and 10, it says, I endure all things for the elect's sake. Romans um, chapter 9, um, it says, My prayer and heart desire is for Israel that they might be saved. All right? So we have a duty to teach and judge the tribes of Israel, meaning the elect of Israel. We are the Lord's spiritual public servants. Right, Second Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2, it says, And the things that thou hast heard of me, um, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. So we here to teach. We here for you. All right? That is why we do the lessons. That is why we go out on the highways and byways. All right? This is our duty. This is our will. The Lord created us to do exactly what we do it. All right. That is, that is what we were we were basically made to do. But upon being public servants of the Lord Yahaba Shemiah Shai, we have how to put it a way and a system on how we do our duties, our due diligence. For the ministry of the Lord, Yahaba Hashem Yahushai. We're not just, we're not doing it just for fame. We're not doing it for, for money. You know, we're doing it all. We are unprofitable servants, as the scripture says. All right? Colossians chapter 4 and verse 6, it says, Let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer every man. All right? So, well seasoned. And you know, food that not season and and have salt in it, it don't taste good so your speech and your teaching have to be palatable to the hearers when they hear it they have to be intrigued that i put them the lips on the on the, the fingers on the lips and be captivated of the words that come out of your mouth which is yahaba shimiyah shai's word they have to marvel at the understanding and the light that shine from you the wisdom that was endued on you from on, from on high all right the holy spirit of yahabah shimia shai that shines out through you and they have to be satisfied thy words were found and i did eat them and after they eat they have to be satisfied they can't be it, it can't be like what happened in church they're going hungry and leaving more hungry than they were all right now when they come they're supposed to they're supposed to be fed they're supposed to be thoroughly fed every time they come looking for videos they're supposed to find videos which is like food your your page your channel is like a cupboard and a fridge every time someone comes by you they open your cupboard they open your fridge there should always be food all right they should never come open your fridge open your cupboard and nothing there to eat meaning you're supposed to have your pages active you're supposed to be always out on the highways and byways all right supposed to be always on the highways and byways and not only always on the highways and byways but also preaching the correct doctrine preaching the correct doctrine all right that is the, that is the key thing you have to be teaching the correct doctrine all right second timothy chapter 2 and verse 15 
All right, Second Timothy. All right, Salakia. Second Timothy, chapter two and verse fifteen. It says, "Study to show thyself approved unto Yahweh, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." Means you're breaking it down directly and complete and completely, but you have to study. You have to put in these studies. A lot of times, you know, you see in these these other groups men forming doctrines off of just one precept and there are tens and a whole bevy of other scriptures that cut in that that you know they they break down all right so like you know listening the apostles works and they're talking about hell all right and people just run with the word hell run with the modern day you know um um the modern day um, you know, description of hell or the modern day, you know, version of hell, or, or you know, and you know, they form their doctrine off of it when not knowing if when you do research, that was just added to the scriptures. There were original words there, Hebrew and Greek words that did not mean a fiery pit burning with fire. All right, so it's, it's you need to study. All right, you need to study. If you're doing the Lord's work, if you are a spiritual public servant, you need to be doing a proper job. You need to be doing a proper job for Yahabah Shemi Al Shai. This is Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 28. It says, The heart of the righteous study to answer. They study to answer. They do a good diligence study. They do a good search to study. But the mouth of the wicked pour it out evil things. Yeah, because the wicked don't study. They don't put in the effort. All right? They just they read something. They come up with an epiphany. And then they go and they cause the sheep to go astray. All right? That is why the scripture says whose mouth must be stopped. You need to, you need to, when you, when you, when you, when you study something and you believe you have an epiphany, guess what? You need to go over and over that fact check it go over it as so so many times as you need making sure that precepts history and facts backing it up before you say you could you could you know you could make a doctrine out of it and a lot of times you're not seeing these other groups doing that that is the reason why beginning with the apostles always have to be correcting them and as the scripture says, they hate him that rebuke at the gate. And that is the, that is the main reason they have issues with the apostles. Because they're being constantly rebuked by the men of the Most High. Alright? They're being constantly rebuked by them. Alright? Proverbs chapter 22. And verse 20 says, Have I not written to thee excellent things in counsel and knowledge? Have the Lord written excellent things unto you? He says, I'll put my word in your mouth. All right? He says, That I might make thee to know the certainty of the words of truth, that thou mightest answer the words of truth to them that send unto thee. So when you speak, you have to speak the words of truth. All right? The scripture said the certainty of the words of truth. You can't go out there taking the Lord's word. And the scripture says there is no guile found in their mouth. When you look up the word guile, go back to lies. All right? You can't distort the doctrine. You can't tell the people that the, the MOTB is not the micro C hip. All right? You can't tell them as embargo or Christianity. You can't do that. You distort any doctrine of the Lord. The scripture says warn to them that do the work of the Lord deceitfully. Because you don't want to lose members, you teach and lies. Nah, it ain't about, it's, not, it's never about quantity, it's always about quality. It is always about quality and never about quantity. The scripture says, glory not in the multitude of unrighteous children, roughly paraphrasing. All right, so you have to make sure when you teach, you teach in the proper breakdown of Yahaba Shemia Shai. All right, the proper breakdown, break it down directly and completely. As as public servants of the Lord, we out here for the elect sake. All right, and if you do anything against the elect of the Lord, guess what? The Lord, Yahabah Shemiah, He not gonna hold you guiltless. 
Just remember that he's not going to hold you guiltless. First Timothy chapter 6 and verse 3 says, If any man teach otherwise and consent not unto wholesome words, even the words of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Mashiach, and to the doctrine which is according to godliness, he is proud knowing nothing, but doting about questions and strife of words. That is what you're doing. You're causing strife. All right? It says, Wherefore cometh envy, strife, railings, evil surmising, perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth you destitute of the truth because why because you not you you first of all you not, you, you don't even have the holy the holy spirit of your abba Hashem Yahshai within you that is we that is where it begins with the lord yahweh after give you to yahweh shai give you his holy spirit so that you could understand this word and if it was not given unto you you're not gonna understand you're not going to understand. The scripture says when the spirit came upon Saul, he prophesied. All right? So with all the Holy Spirit of Yahweh Hashem, Yahshai, you can't do nothing. And it was given unto us through Yahweh Shai after he was resurrected. All right? Um, it says perverse disputing of men of corrupt minds and destitute of the truth, supposing that gain is godliness from such withdraw thyself so withdraw yourself from a man when you realize the things that he's saying the things that he's saying it, it not you know contained in the scriptures when when you know when you realize that now what they say that the doctrine not matching up with scriptures you know you depart you depart from such men depart from such men all right This is the book of Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4. It says, Yahabah Shemir Shai had given me the tongue of the loon that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. It says, He waketh morning by morning and waketh my ear to hear as the learned. So you have to learn. You have to learn this word. All right, and we learn it from our apostles. All right, and we go out there and teach the correct doctrine through the spirit of Yahweh Shemiah Shai. And how do we know that we are not as men pleasers as these other groups and being led astray? Because not only have we been taught how to use a sword, we also sharpen our sword. All right, just like the church of Berea, we search the scriptures to see if those things are so, and which is a which is a righteous thing to do. All right. Going on, verse, verse 5, it says, Yahaba Shemiashai had opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned back away. Alright, so we didn't turn back away from pushing this truth, and the Lord opened our ear. The Lord opened our ear so that we could understand and receive this truth. Alright, didn't he say make the ears of these people fat? All right, the Lord didn't do that with us. He opened our eyes, our ears, and our heart to understand and receive this word so that we could go out here and be his public servants, his prophets, all right, his messengers to wake up the elect of the house of Israel. All right, that is the, that is the, that is the reason the Lord, you know, woke us up. As the scripture says, he gave us a mouth of wisdom that the adversary will not be able to gain, say, nor resist. Why? Because everything we say is, is factual. It can't be proven. All right? And whatever, guess what? Even everything that's happening right now is prophetic. All right? Everything that we say, we could prove it. We could prove it through the scripture. We could prove it through history, through sciences. All right? And it is all 100% accurate. And that is why the adversary cannot gain, say, nor resist the words that we say. All right? And that is also why, you know, the reason why, you know, in the hour of martial law, you know, we are on that list of people that, you know, they are going to seek after, you know, in the hour of martial law for their concentration camps. The final precept, First Peter 5 and 2 says, Feed the flock of Yahweh Shemi Shai, which is among you, taking the oversight there of being you know, faithful public servants taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, 
but willingly not for filthy lucre but of a ready mind neither as being lords over Yahabah Shemeshai's heritage but being examples of the flock it says and when the chief shepherd shall appear you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away so if you you're thinking about you know lord you know what we're gonna receive guess what when your lord come you're gonna receive your prize but as of right now we're doing this out of love and also out of fear and faith in Yahaba shimei shai we are the lord's faithful public servants and with that i want to give all praises and on glory to Yahaba shimei shai i want to give double honors to the apostles of great mills to not do rule well salutation to the men of the whole land since i elect is a beloved brother Marcus out here in Trinidad saying Shalawam and stay strong. Shalawam.